Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This is Zach over at NV Woodworks. So today in this video, I'm gonna show you how I hooked up a slow turning rotisserie motor to my lathe. So let's get started. All right, so first off, you might be wondering why would you wanna hook a rotisserie motor up to your lathe? What's the point of all this? And the big thing is these motors go about two or three RPMs and the slowest that my lathe motor will go is 50. And this is important when you're trying to apply an epoxy finish on turned pieces. Um, the thing is, you need it to be going, you know, probably less than 5 RPMs, I'm guessing. I don't know exact, you know, numbers, but this motor goes somewhere between 2 and 3 RPMs, I think. And that is a good speed. Uh, it's just going to keep your piece moving while you apply that finish. It'll let it flow out, but it's not going to let it sag and drip. That's the key. So... The question was, how do you hook up, you know, connect a rotisserie motor up to your lathe? And I kind of thought about it for quite a while and finally came up with a very simple way to do it on my lathe. Now, this setup is going to be very specific to my lathe and my setup because it has, uh, you know, like the hand wheel has threads in it. That made it very simple to just grab a threaded rod and connect all the parts together. I wanted to share this though, even if you don't have this lathe, um, you know, I think that this setup is pretty easily adaptable to a wide variety of different things. You know, I don't know the answers. It'll be specific to, to whatever your lathe is, but hopefully you can get an idea, get some, you know, some inspiration on how you could set this up on your own lathe with a few minor tweaks to this setup. So uh, the big things were, I wanted this to be pretty cheap, I wanted it to be pretty simple to, to make, and I wanted it to be a system that was easy to put on and take off. I didn't want it to be this big hassle, <laughs> you know, every time I wanted to do this. So uh, let's, first off, I'm gonna lay out all the parts that I have for this setup. What did I need? Then I'm gonna show you how I hook it all up, and then uh, we'll kind of wrap things up. So let's get these things laid out so you can see what I, what I cobbled together for this. All right, so the parts list is pretty short. There's only six pieces to this whole whole setup. Uh, first off, the rotisserie motor. I bought this from Amazon. It was 18 bucks, and I had this stuff uh, in the shop. Uh, and I'm sure that there's lots of different things that you probably have laying around that'll do the same thing. All this does is just holds the rotisserie motor onto my lathe, so it doesn't fall off or anything. I also needed 5 8 11 threaded rod. So I picked this up on Amazon. It was a 12 inch length of it. It was about nine bucks. A couple of nuts. I had to buy a pack of 25, but they were still only seven or eight bucks. Um, so five eighths, 11 nuts, a couple of those. Five sixteenths bar stock. And this is basically, I actually had a, an old barbecue spit. Um, I didn't have the motor anymore, but I had a piece of this, this uh, five sixteenths bar stock from it. And so I just needed a, a short length of that. I actually found some of this, if you don't have it on hand, uh, for about eight bucks on Amazon for about a 12 inch length of five sixteenths bar stock. And then last, uh, this isn't necessary, uh, you know, to, to get the thing to work, but I think it's a, a good option. Um, so it's a, it's a timer plug, plug this into the wall, plug the rotisserie motor into this, and then you can set a timer basically where it's going to shut the thing off after, you know, four hours or 15 minutes, whatever it is. Um, this is a good option for me because I like to put the finish on at the end of the day. And then I'll just set this once everything's, you know, flowed out, I've gotten the bubbles out and everything like that. And I just want to keep it, you know, moving until it sets up. I'll hit this for about four hours and then I'll leave the shop and I know that the motor is going to shut off after four hours. So even if you have a shop on site, um, it might not be a bad way to go, you know, just in case you forget that this thing's running and you leave the shop. Uh, you can always set this timer. It was 13 bucks on Amazon. Uh, not a bad price. You can probably find one for even cheaper. So all of these parts, uh, you know, obviously these two things are, are self-explanatory, but these things, what they do is I cobbled them together to create this. And what it does is it connects my lathe to the rotisserie motor. Put that in there. So what I did was I cut a three inch length of that 5 8 11 threaded rod. Obviously the two nuts just go on here and they, they lock onto my lathe. My lathe's hand wheel has a 5 8 11 thread in it. That's why this works for me very simply. And then on the back end to connect the, the, the 5 16 bar stock to the, the threaded rod, I just drilled out a hole in the end of this threaded rod. I did this on my, my wood lathe, um, just use my you know, norm, normal drill bits and everything, used a little bit of oil to keep the, the heat down. 
first I used the center drill, then a pilot hole, and then I just used a, a 13 30 seconds drill bit, and then just basically just popped this thing in, just jammed it in there. Um, I, you could also go for a, a larger hole and just epoxy it in if you didn't really want to mess around with getting it super tight. So that's all that it is. This is the thing that connects everything together. Um, very simple, uh, easy to make. I, I was going for the, the easiest engineering, <laughs> basically, that I could do with tools that I had in my shop. Once you have this piece together, I just put the, the two nuts down a little ways, about an inch down on the threads. And then all you gotta do is just screw this into the end of the hand wheel. Again, this is specific to my lathe or a lathe that has this uh, threaded end. And, and what the, why this is threaded is it's meant to hold or, or to adapt to one of the, the vacuum chuck systems. So I'm guessing, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that this 5 8 11 thread is fairly common if your hand wheel is threaded to accept a vacuum chuck. If not, then you're gonna have to adapt this system. But I just screw that piece in. And then get this thing working right here. Pop that guy on there. And then again, I just use these, I just kind of wrap it around a couple of these things that are on the motor here. Doing this kind of backwards, but that way this thing isn't gonna, you know, come off of here. You can kind of just get it wedged on there. I like these kind of bendable things. And then what I do is I just, I have a, a, a plug on my toolbox over there. Plug this guy in here, plug this into the toolbox, and then I just turn it on. So on this, on this thing, you can just have it just turn on and off. So I usually just start out doing that, hit the on button. And then before I leave, I hit this four hour button and walk away basically. So there you have it, my no frills, kind of ugly way of hooking up a rotisserie motor onto my lathe. Um, but it works pretty well, and if you have the 5 8 11 threads in your hand wheel, this is a pretty easy way to go, I think. Um, but even if you don't, um, hopefully this will give you some ideas on how you can get all this stuff connected if you've been thinking about doing this. Um, you know, really the key is you just need to figure out a way to connect that 5 16 bar stock to something attached to your hand wheel, uh, and then you should be golden. Um, so, and if you have any ideas uh, of how you could do this a little bit simpler, easier, cheaper, um, or for, you know, different lathes, definitely let us know down in the comments. This is just kind of what I came up with, you know, like knowing what tools I have, knowing what things are available out there. Um, you know, and I'm sure it's not perfect. There's probably lots of other, at least other ways, if not probably better ways. Uh, so let us know if you have some other ideas on this. Uh, and also if you are thinking about, you know, trying out epoxy finishes, let me know what you think about doing them. Um, I've been kind of doing a few more of them. I did, I did one on the uh, pinecone lamp project and I really liked it. It turned out so good. One of the things that I like is if you can get that finish on perfect when you're applying it, you're pretty much done. There's no sanding, there's no, you know, polishing, buffing or any of that stuff. Like it just, they turn out really good. Um, if you can get it on, you know, pretty, pretty good on when, when you're applying it. So let me know what you think about that. If you've been doing epoxy finishes, if you know any tips or tricks on how to apply them, let us know. Um, one tip that I will say is I like to put one of those kind of uh, clear tubs over the piece once I've gotten everything kind of laid out flat, the, you know, hit it with the, the torch. 
cover it. That way dust doesn't just settle on it. Um, so that's one little tip that I'll, I'll share with you guys. Um, but anyway, so if this is your first time on my channel, we do all kinds of resin casting projects, tips and tricks, and experiments around here. So if you're interested in that, definitely hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified when new videos get posted as well as when, when I go live. Uh, and if you're thinking about getting into resin casting but you're not really sure where to begin, check out my ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Resin Casting. It answers all those beginner questions like, you know, what do I need to get started? How does it work? It'll get you over that initial learning curve so you can get into the shop and start making some resin cast projects of your own. It's available on my website if you're interested. So until next time guys happy casting